And for us, if the numbers don't make sense, you don't need to force a deal to try to make it work, especially when it's something so significant like a fire damage property. What's up guys, welcome to the video. My name is Derek, AKA Flipping a House if you're new here. And we are outside our latest acquisition. We actually haven't even closed on this one yet. Uh, Ben's going to close in a couple hours. I came to get a free washer and dryer that we're gonna be taking to the Airbnbs. And uh, so later today, we're gonna be going to Fifth Ward. We're gonna be checking on a couple properties over there. But I wanted to start here because this is our first ever fire damage property that we've ever dealt with. And it's gonna be a huge rehab. And it's our first fire property. Like I've never even walked a fire damage property. I've done hundreds of deals and uh, this week alone I've walked three this is the first one we might be getting another one it's just crazy but I want to show you guys what it looks like because it's not terrible it's just we are gonna have to replace a lot and I want to show you guys what that looks like and then of course when we're done with this project I'll do a full before and after break down the numbers the good the bad and everything in between but let's go take a look so I think it's important that we start on the outside of the property. As you guys can see, a majority of the fire that took place in this house was on the upper level. And so you can see they've tarped the roof, which thank God, because it's been raining like crazy in Houston and that would just cause even more damage. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys, like the outside really isn't bad. It's just that top area. Like if you were driving by and you did not notice that, you know, the house looks really normal. We're in a great neighborhood. Homes are selling uh, around 300,000 all the way up to 330,000. So we already got our dump dropped. We're gonna be starting first thing in the morning. I had to bring my contractor a check to get started. But let's take a look around, guys. Now the downstairs is honestly, we're not doing too much. I mean, yes, there's some cleanup, but if you see all the X's, this is just uh, from the insurance company where the homeowners filed a claim. And with the kitchen, we're really not gonna be doing much in here. I mean, this house was built in the early 2000s. So, I mean, this is granite. These cabinets are really good. It just really needs to be cleaned up. So we're gonna sand it down, paint the cabinets, give it a more modern feel, but we're gonna be keeping the granite and uh, really just keeping this tile, cleaning it up. We're gonna be doing some new carpet in here. And then uh, that's where everything took place, which I'll take you guys up there in just a second. But I wanna just really go through this downstairs and show you all really quick that, you know, there's not really a lot of damage down here. This is the master. And in here, we're gonna be spending, you know, a decent amount. We wanna make this very modern. So we're gonna be ripping out the shower, uh, retiling around the tub. We're gonna be doing some granite in here to match the kitchen huge master closet sorry the lighting is terrible the house already has power however due to the fire certain things aren't working but let's go take a look upstairs where the real damage is so as you guys can see this is all insulation that was ripped out either by the fire department or the fire itself so pretty bad as you can see, I'm trying to zoom in guys, but uh, those beams are burnt to a crisp, right? So I mean like this whole top of the house, we're basically ripping it out. Like everything is going up here. You can see there's a major hole. Thank God they put a tarp. Bathroom, I can't really show you guys. The lighting is terrible. And bedroom. But it's pretty much a war zone up here, guys. There's another bedroom. But let's talk about this deal, right? I think it's pretty obvious the motivation of why the sellers were looking to sell. Um, but let's talk about how we got this lead and how this deal actually came uh, to fruition. So this was an SEO lead. That means search engine optimization. That means somebody went on Google, they searched up our company, uh, Very Fast Home Buyers, and they found us. So they reached out and at the time they were dealing with a property management company. The sellers actually are in Germany right now temporarily. So we actually had to communicate with them through WhatsApp and email just to get this deal done. But thank God for technology, right? So they reached out to us. 
I actually only live like 25 minutes away, so I was like, let me just go drive by to see what the house looks like, if it's still standing. I mean, you just never really know with fire damage. They said it wasn't that bad, but sellers tell you that it only needs a little bit of work all the time. So you need to put your eyes on properties before you start making offers. So when we came out here to take a look, I sent Ben some pictures, but we weren't able to get on the inside of the property. And that's very critical, right? Like I could see the outside, the outside doesn't look bad, but we really needed to get on the inside. Now the lady was adamant because they wanted to make a decision quickly. They were getting paid out with the insurance and they just wanted to be done as they're trying to buy a new property in New York, right? And we know all these details because my partner is amazing at building rapport. And that's why it's so important to like really nurture these leads, especially when we spend so much money on things like SEO. So anyways, they were getting insurance money they're trying to buy a house in New York they wanted an offer from us and we never give solid offers unless we're ready to buy a house so we gave her a range and we told her you know this house is worth like I said around 325 and we gave her a range of like 160 to 190 and she said you know at first she kind of liked it and then she was getting offers from other people and then she got an offer for like 260 and then she got an offer for 220 and we said hey you know miss seller we appreciate the opportunity but you know our max would be 190 and that's still dependent on seeing the inside because we still didn't even have access so she said okay well you know that number is too low for me it won't work and we said that's totally fine please stay in contact we you know if anything happens they back out we're happy to you know purchase the property it's so important like I don't want you to miss that last thing because my mentor always told me a good deal is one that you can walk away from right and for us if the numbers don't make sense you don't need to force a deal to try to make it work especially especially when it's something so significant like a fire damaged property. So two days go by and the seller actually called us back and those people that offered, you know, 260, they actually price dropped her down to 160. And note, when we gave our range, it was already higher than that. She loved Ben, they had been talking for like a week. And so she was like, hey, look, I can get you on the inside now. Can you give me a solid offer? And I think I can get my husband on board. Note, they're eight hours ahead, so this communication is taking days at a time. So I came back out, I viewed the property, we took pictures, and then I normally, I can guesstimate bids, but I wanted my contractor to walk it and give me an idea of how much, so I make sure I'm not shooting myself in the foot. When we're doing just cosmetic rehabs, I've been doing this long enough, I know what the bid is, but when it's something so significant like this, I needed his op opinion, right? Like that's why I keep people smarter than me around. So he gave me his opinion, and it's crazy because the number that I guessed for the rehab, which I put $70,000 is how much it's gonna cost to rehab this. I was pretty much spot on. I think we'll be around 70, maybe 72, but that's given that everything goes perfect. And as you know, in real estate, nothing ever goes perfect. So we locked up the property and that was about a week ago. And we told her we can close in a week as long as we can get clear title, which we did. Brought my lender in and created a win-win situation. I think the important takeaways are really just stand your ground, make sure you know your numbers. And if you're not sure about anything, bring in an expert. But that's pretty much the gist of this house. We're getting started full on tomorrow. We're gonna be ripping everything out and uh, it should be a pretty good Good, a pretty good deal guys so now we're about to take these appliances I have to drop the kids off and then I'm gonna head to fifth ward but you guys are gonna go with me so let's ride Are you even flipping houses if you don't go to Home Depot two, three, four, five times a day? I mean, this is already trip number two. It's not even two o'clock yet. So we're gonna see how many Home Depot employees it takes to get these two refrigerators. Cause so far I've talked to about six different ones and nobody knows what the f is going on. All right guys, so we're here in Fifth Ward. We're at the Twins, as y'all saw, we were moving in appliances because we're actually, after over a year of being in construction, dealing with the city, passing permits, shitty contractors going way over budget, which I'll break down those numbers eventually. We are almost to the finish line. We are starting our refinance and we are looking to get these bad girls. And I say bad because we call them two badass twins for a reason. 
Uh, so many learning lessons, but uh, we're gonna get them on Airbnb in the next week. So we actually had the furniture getting put back in. Uh, if you guys didn't know, our AC condensers got stole about a month ago. So I had to replace those. Like just so many headaches and so many learning lessons. But yeah, guys, I mean, they look beautiful. I'm gonna show you guys, like I said, a before and after video and just talk about everything that we learned on this deal. But let's go check out Arapaho because we've actually been doing a lot of changes over there as well. So let's go. All right, guys, so we're over here at Arapaho, as you guys saw. I mean, we're getting the siding redone so we can get ready for the refinance. And then once that's complete, we have a couple properties that we're waiting to close uh, that we will then dump money into. But she's coming along. I mean, the siding is going to make a huge difference, huge, huge difference. But we had to talk with my contractors. I show up. Nobody's here. The door is wide open. There's tools everywhere. Like gotta get in the ass man sometimes they be tripping all right so like i said guys this property is going to be a great investment we're right by east river i'm so excited for these properties but we got to get these uh we got to get the siding done so we can get out of the hard money loan refinance out and then we will do the repairs on the inside it's minor cosmetic stuff and then foundation and then we'll be live on airbnb and the goal is by summer to have these three and then providence live so we'll have five income producing assets and then we still have the properties on street cart which we can then focus on those and then we've already started the new development which i'm going to do a total video on that because i haven't even really showed you guys but ben and i started a new development project that's not too far from here uh, we're working on replatting or subdividing the lots currently and then we'll be able to start the new build so this has kind of been my day now i have a long drive back home i get to sit in traffic but i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, if you haven't already like subscribe uh, make sure you're following me on instagram and tiktok until the next video peace